This is the 68th lecture in the FOA lecture series on fiber optics. This lecture is going to be a little bit different because what we're going to do is we're going to do a demonstration of how to build your own passive optical network. This is what our passive optical network demo looks like. We're going to build it using components that we bought online for less than $100, exclusive of the laptop you see in the picture, of course. Passive optical networks are a specialized type of fiber optic network that's used now to make fiber to the home possible. It's also revolutionized enterprise computer networks, where in both cases it offers much lower costs and extreme scalability. That means you can connect a lot of people for not a lot of money. The secret to passive optical networks is the fact that they transmit bidirectionally over just one single mode fiber. And they replace traditional electronic switches with fiber optic splitters. In the simple diagram shown here, you can see how a signal from the central office is sent out to a splitter. The optical splitter, which is a totally passive component, splits the signal into multiple fibers, which then connects up multiple users. In the opposite direction, from the users, when they send a signal to the central office, the signal goes on their single fiber to a splitter, which combines all the signals onto one output fiber, which then connects to the central office. So the PON splitter's role is to act as a broadcast switch on the downstream side from the central office to the users and on the upstream to combine all the signals into a single fiber for the CO. So PONs save on fiber, save on electronics, and that's the big savings in cost. PONs scale very well to large numbers of users. Typically, a system today connects 32 users on a single fiber, and they can be over a large geographic area. The link can be 20 kilometers long. So to use the minimum amount of fiber and cover the geographic area of the users, it's typical that splitters can be cascaded. So we'll have one splitter going to a number of other splitters in different geographic areas. If we have a 32 time split, which is typical today, you might have a combination of 1x2, 1x4, 1x8 splitters, even 1x16s that total up to a split of 32 over the entire run of the network from the central office to the user. Now, passive optical networks only need one fiber to transmit in both directions. That's because the transceivers have wavelength division multiplexers in the outputs and inputs. So it transmits in one wavelength of light in one direction and a second wavelength of light in the opposite direction. The traditional GPON wavelengths are 1490 nanometers downstream and 1310 nanometers upstream. Simultaneously on one fiber, because they're at different wavelengths, they don't interrupt each other. The splitters split the signals for all the other users connected to the central office in the downstream direction, that's to the right in our slide, 
and they combine signals in the upstream direction to the left. They allow multiple users to share the same fibers, 32 or more users in a typical PON network. This reduces the need for electronic switching. And each user's signals are uniquely encrypted, so they can't read their neighbor's emails and their neighbors can't read theirs. The encryption, of course, also makes the networks very secure, which makes them very popular with government agencies, for example. As we said earlier, you can cascade splitters to minimize the use of fiber and allow the network design to be optimized for the geographic locations of the users. So we show two splitters here, because that's what our demo is going to be in a minute. And we're going to do a 1x2 and a 1x4 splitter for a total of 1x8, a total of 8 splits. The most widely used pawns today are GPON for Gigabit Pawn. And it takes a 2.5 gigabit per second downstream signal and splits it for up to 32 users. Going upstream, it takes a 1.25 gigabit per second signal from each of the users and combines it in the splitter to go back to the central office. Newer versions of PONs are becoming available that use 10 gigabits per second and can split to as many as 512 users. Here's the equipment we're going to use for our demonstration and the equipment that you can buy online and do this demonstration for yourself. You can do it just for your own interest and enjoyment or if you're an instructor this makes an absolutely wonderful experiment to do in a class to show your students how fiber optic networks work. This setup uses a laptop that we have in our office with an Ethernet port and not shown off the right side of the screen connected on a Cat5 cable is the router for our internet connection. Here's what we bought online. We bought two bi-directional media converters that convert Ethernet to single-mode fiber and operate over a single fiber, bi-directionally. Important that you get the bi-directional versions of the media converters. The ones we bought did not come with power supplies, so we had to buy the power supplies separately. You need to check to make sure you have the power supplies also. Also online, we bought two fiber optic splitters, a 1x4 splitter and a 1x2 splitter, both terminated in SC connectors, Sam Charlie fiber optic connectors. These were also online and very inexpensive. We didn't buy fiber optic cables because we had plenty in our lab, but you do need at least two single mode fiber optic cables terminated with SC connectors, and you need several mating adapters to connect everything up for the demo. For our first demo, we want to see how a bidirectional link works. So we have connected a PC to one of our media converters and our internet router to the other media converter, and then we connect the two media converters with fiber optic cables. We use two cables and put a connection in the center because that's where we're going to do our next demo. But let's start with just a simple link with a connection in the center and let's see how this transmits data. Remember it's transmitting in both directions simultaneously at different wavelengths. And here you can see our PC is playing an FOA YouTube video on the screen through this single fiber bidirectional link. 
And if you look closely at the media converters, you'll see the lights flickering, showing we're transmitting data. Let's test our link. So let's open the link and attach a fiber optic power meter, which we also bought online for a very, very low price. And you can see that we're measuring a power level of minus 8.34 dBm from the transmitter of one of the media converters. For the demo, we also checked the other direction and got a similar power level. So that shows that both transmitters are transmitting at the same time over the same fiber, which is how the bidirectional link works. When you're doing your own demo, be sure to test in both directions so you can see that the transmitters are active in both directions and the link is bidirectional. Now, let's convert our bidirectional single fiber link into a passive optical link. So we open up the connection and we connect up a one by two splitter. So what we have is we have the input from one of the transceivers going through the splitter and out to the other transceiver over one of the two ports. In one direction, we're splitting the signal, and in the other direction, we're combining them. So if the splitter works as advertised, the link should still work, exactly as before. And here you can see we're watching the same FOA YouTube video. The next step for you to do in your demonstration is to disconnect the link and plug it into the other port of the coupler to show that both ports of the coupler work identically. Now let's test our link. We'll take our fiber optic power meter and we'll measure the output of the two port splitter. Now, before the splitter we measured minus 8.34 dBm. After the splitter, as you can see here, we're measuring minus 11.65 dBm. So across the splitter, we have a loss of 3.31 dB. An ideal 1x2 splitter would have a loss of 3 dB. So in this case, we have an excess loss of 0.31 dB. When we tested the other port, we got 3.58 dB, or an excess loss of 0.58 dB. Part of that is the excess loss of the splitter. Part of that is the fact that the splitter isn't exactly 3 dB. But those are the kinds of things we need to test when we're testing a passive optical network so we know how the network's operating and whether or not the splitter is working as it should. Next, let's try a link operating with cascaded splitters. We have a 1x4 splitter and a 1x2 splitter, which gives us a split of 8 times. And, as you can see, our link works perfectly well through a split ratio of 8. We'll actually work at a split ratio of 32 and maybe even 64. A lot of what determines how many splits you can handle is how long the link is and how much loss you have in the fiber. So the key is to always do some testing on your link. When we test our 1 by 8 pawn link, we find it has a loss of 10.22 dB. And each port varied only by a couple of tenths of a dB. The ideal loss for a 1 by 8 is 9 dB. That's 3 dB for each factor of 2 split three times. 9 dB for a 1 by 8 splitter. 
So the excess loss of the splitters in this particular link is 1.22 dB. So we did two things with our test. We tested the power level to see what it was, and we measured the loss across the splitters, and we determined the excess loss of the splitters to determine that the splitters are good. So let's review. What did we demonstrate? We demonstrated how a bidirectional link works over a single fiber. We demonstrated how passive optical networks use splitters to connect multiple users. When we tested our systems, we compared the results that we got from the tests with the expected loss budget of the splitters. So we looked at our link power budgets for splitters and pawns. These are all things that techs need to know when they are operating networks like fiber to the home or passive optical lands using passive optical network technologies. If you'd like to do this yourself, you can follow the simple directions here, or you can go to FiberU, where on the FiberU website, we have detailed directions on how to do this demonstration yourself. And you can do it for fun, you can do it for your classes, for your students, or you can do it for your workers to help them learn how passive optical networks work and how they're used in today's fiber optic networks. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the International Professional Association of Fiber Optics, and the International Certifying Body for Fiber Optic Technicians. You can learn more about us on our website, foa.org, and you can enjoy more than two dozen free online courses at fiberu.org.